last time in class, just in case you were absent. Man, Mr. Manor said we can't have the garden anymore, and it's all Lisa's fault. Her rabbits left us with desolate, barren soil. So think about your actions and what choices and activities can positively make an impact on our ecosystem. Because you can change it positively or negatively. As living things are vibrant and always changing to adjust to their new environments, you know, their garden actually may not be a loss after all. Wait, what? Wait, what? Uh, okay, I'm ready to make it right. What could we possibly grow in this garden though? There's nothing will grow in this soil. Well, I wouldn't say nothing. Gerardo, what was the pH of the soil? Uh, about 4.4. .4. Okay, um, well, look at this data here. Could this unknown vegetable, this graph is showing, could it grow in your garden? Uh, I don't even know what we're looking at. Well, I know how to interpret any graph. Thank you very much, Mr. Mippins. Um, it's showing you the number of plants as the pH of the soil increases. Oh, well, then yeah, it could grow in our garden because when the pH is between four and five, it had the highest number of plants. Absolutely. So this mystery plant here is a vegetable called a radish. And from this data, we can determine its range of tolerance. That's the numeric range of an abiotic factor that an organism can tolerate to survive and reproduce. Now that abiotic factor could be anything from pH, temperature, and so much more. What fruit could you all grow in your garden? Well, it looks like cranberries and blueberries. Their range of tolerance is between four and five as well. You're absolutely right. So what would be the optimum soil pH if you wanted to grow kiwi? Optimum? Um, you mean like the best pH? Great context clues, right? So yes, the optimum value would be the estimated value where the population thrived the best. Well, it looks to be about uh, 3.50. Hey, so kiwi can tolerate really acidic soil then. Yes, it really can. So you see, even though environments change, maybe due to temperature, pH, or whatever circumstances, some organisms adapt or can still thrive in those changing environments. Whether it's our ability to sweat and maintain homeostasis when we're hot, or even plants put in a changing environment can still survive by moving towards or away from whatever they need or whatever they don't need. These are called tropisms, and there are many different types. Just looking here, which term do you think represents movement towards water? Um, it's gotta be hydrotropism, right? Right, and phototropism must mean uh, movement towards a selfie. We know it means movement towards light, Mickens. Come on now. <laughs> Okay, save the attitude. <laughs> but whether it's light, water, chemicals, gravity, or even touch. Wait, how does that work? Well, remember that kudzu that we talked about the last time? Any vine-like plant, once it senses touch from some surface, the other parts of its body will respond and move towards that surface causing it to climb up walls. And we've even seen this in these type of plants here. Hey, that's a Venus flytrap, right? Man, we should have planted some of those in our garden. Man, you look like a Venus flytrap. But see, you so childish, man. Hey, don't that's do that. Like, like, you don't want us childish because you always, you always, you always talking about it. Maybe just be lame and crap, just man. Hey! Okay, look. I'm not going to close this lesson with y'all arguing like y'all have the past 20 times. So shut up. He's talking to y'all, not me. Since we started this unit. Yeah, like a year ago. Sorry, I'll be quiet. Since we started this unit, I've said one thing in each lesson. All living things depend on each other and the environment to survive. And if that's the case... Our actions as humans play a big role in our survival. 
and the survival of other populations. I told you to think about your actions and what choices and activities can positively make an impact on our ecosystem because it affects the matter and energy flow we need to keep the population growing. It affects the biodiversity that allows for multiple relationships to continue. It can lessen the chances of random drastic environmental changes so that you can continue living, surviving, and hopefully to reproduce later on, maybe without having to adapt so much. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed our ecology unit. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thank you. Huh. Look, I've been in this class for two years now, and I still don't know why he pretends to like be on a show or something. Yeah, I just, I, I didn't know. I thought know. it was a joke that all y'all was just in on. I didn't know. Like, I've yet to see a video posted anywhere. Like, I ain't seen a YouTube channel or anything. Like, what?